everyone, this is Fisherman's Village broadcast happy hour and it is brought to you by Tito's Vodka and Elysian Brewing and we're here at Shack Art Center in downtown Everett. I'm Eva Walker and I'm here with the Moon Doggies. Hi guys. Hi. I think the last time I saw all you guys was concerts at the mural. Um, well, I've seen you at Moat. Oh, duh. Yeah. I just, I, I stopped, I stopped working there. Maybe you know that already. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's been a while. But we, in the, uh, in the lobby, we've, we've yeah. crossed paths yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And the last time I saw you guys perform as a band, I think was the mural yeah, thing. Yeah, when we played that show. Yeah, yeah, and it was awesome. And tonight yeah. was awesome. So let's start on a nice, positive note. Not that this is going to get dark or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it will get dark. I mean, you are going to sign in blood at the end of the interview, so. <laughs> Um, but let's talk about 2019, like before <laughs> everything was what it is. Uh, your last year, last couple years before COVID. Let's we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 2019 was not a great year for me either. <laughs> so, um, but. Um, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> 2019 was we pretty fun. Awesome we got to go on tour. We took the entire country. And no, no, I'm just, you know, <laughs> kind of. We got to play with the Head and the Heart on a whole series of shows around the country. That was pretty awesome. And we did a West Coast tour in the spring of Oh, that's right. Oh, man. It's all kind of like time. So this is the thing. I think like COVID, is my, my, pers my perspective of time and the, the way you put things in perspective, um, it's just, time has become so bizarre I feel like and so even feeling like something like that that feels like 10 years ago right yeah. like it feels like um it's just been such a blur and surreal and there's this so much uh going on and so much at stake that you're like it's weird the the way that we're um perceiving time and in our experiences and whether it's personal or whether it's um uh, within the band and um so it's I feel like everyone feels like very similarly like where it's like a week feels like a month or a day feels like you know it's totally. like time is so uh and it's all mushed together it's yeah it's very odd yeah totally well the touring with uh, the head and the heart that's pretty awesome right how that was, was that how long was it five weeks five weeks yeah nice nice where'd you guys go uh it was like midwest east coast south um it was I think I want to say 22 shows in like 27 days or something like that. Yeah. It was exciting. I mean, to be able to, they obviously, you know, have exploded. And so being able to uh, be in, I mean, there was that show in Minneapolis that was like, basically like, it felt like we were in an airplane hangar <laughs> oh, and yeah. just, and they have such like, in, like diehard fans and they're very like sweet and supportive and, uh, it's very surreal because then light like the lights go up and they're just like or you know actually usually the it's like yeah it's like the lights you know like once the lights kind of dim you go like you know because people are filing in and at the end of the show you're going like whoa <laughs> <laughs> it's like an ocean of people it's really cool. <laughs> yeah it's surreal because you know if moondog is tour on our own if we're headlining it's like you know you're just it's a roll of the dice you know it's and it's you just kind of like you know, somehow somebody on like, you know, heard it on KXP on the other side of the country or whatever. You're like, uh, uh, you have that experience, but those moments are like surreal. And that was, that was so much fun. That was like one of those, you're just pinching yourself the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. We're just like, don't end. I don't want this yeah. to end. You're just like, you feel like you joined the circus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you guys remember what your last, uh, show was like what the, it doesn't matter the size of the crowd, but like your last show before the lockdown, <laughs> and does it feel like it was a hundred years ago? Yeah, <laughs> it does. I mean, like we literally have only played together maybe four or five times, and um, we played a show. We played two shows at the Clock Out that a lot of people, uh, a lot of our friends, were like, "That was that was literally the week before." Well, that was, was when like, like, are we supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. Like, this feels weird. Like, are it was before is everything this get bad. Like, we didn't nobody knew anything, you know. So we were all where we were on the cusp of going, like, sh you know, it was like we shouldn't be doing this, but it's not quite sh clear. <laughs> it might have still... been one of the last shows that. Yeah, play, that's what yeah, people yeah. were saying. March sixth and March seventh, I think. Yeah, that was at that point where you were suddenly it was clicking, where you're going, 
you know, we were still maybe having the conversation. And you're like, hey, you know, it's like a lot of people get the cold or whatever. It's like that was that moment where you're like, oh, this is for real. And yeah. it was like sh that, so it was right on the cusp, and it was like we sh and we ended up doing it, and then right about a week or a week and a half after that is when it was like shut down. Yeah, so. it's uh, you all and Naked Giants, and I think uh, the Von Lamar Organ Show, and me and my brother's band. Our last show was the first week of March. Also, it oh, seems really? like everyone kind of has that like, yeah, March sixth, seventh, fifth, and everyone, and then it was just like the world stopped right after that because uh, our last show was the day they also announced that South by Southwest was canceled. And we were like, yeah. should we even just, no one's going to, no one's going to come, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, it seems like that, like that last March or that beginning of that first week of March is just kind of epic. And we didn't all realize right. it. We <laughs> were like, okay. no, yeah. we were like, oh, just yeah. every single thing that happens. <laughs> well, <laughs> we would declare the holiday, yeah, like the really new nice Christmas, to meet right? You. <laughs> yeah. We were like, we'll see y'all in July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so um, one thing that I realized today when me and uh, Ryan were talking actually, was that next month is gonna be 10 years since your second record came out so i realized that when i walked in and i looked at the that that was i was like oh <laughs> so i was gonna Again, ask time is so strange right yeah now. i was gonna ask like is there anything like brewing for that but it seems like maybe that was that kind of was a reminder for everyone <laughs> maybe it's because it you know absolutely yeah that was uh maybe i mean <laughs> yeah uh i remember that very fondly and very like that was um a fun i mean that's kind of a somber Okay, it was kind of a more headphones record for sure, and that was like a fun, you know, uh, record to make. It's a little bit more. We got a little. We were able to have a little bit. Like the first record that we made, we just paid for it ourselves, and you never know what's gonna happen, you know. Totally. And then that was one of those where um, it definitely. We made that with Eric Blood, and mm. uh, and also Philek and Kurt Block were involved in that. Nice. We were all. Um, it was a it was a cool record. We got it like um, I remember specifically when I think about that record. I think about that we had recorded the whole record, and then at the very end of it, I think our um, our old keyboardist had turned had plugged into an old Leslie cabinet, and then we realized that that was the sound, and so we had to go back and re-record like a bunch of stuff through the Leslie because we we're like, oh, it's like watery and it had this like vibe to it. And, um, we also put the pedal steel through the Leslie, which was oh yeah, fun. Chris Achi nice. from the yeah. Heart was uh, still pedal stealing with the Maldives at the time, and um, came out, came over and, and played. And um, we were a little. It was funny. We were more like experimental. We got to like try different versions of songs, and um, got to have a little bit more time. And um, yeah, that was one of those records that was like, at the time, I think I remember putting it out and people were like, this isn't as fun as the first one. But <laughs> whenever I find people who like, like Tideland, they're always like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so are you all from Everett? Us three. Or the three, where are you from originally? Seattle. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. passed the you test. You don't have to sell your soul at the end mm -hmm. of the interview. Oh, no, good. Oh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, you guys seem to have, um, well, the three of you, I'll say, have Everett's pride, um, which is admirable. So, like, um, you know, mentioning, like, where the Moondog is, we're from Everett. Is there, um, is there an influence from the city on the music? That you guys I don't know I, I think there's like there's that pride I do um, just because there it's 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 a funny thing to be in like Indiana and just be like where the Moondoggers are from Everett Washington <laughs> you know <laughs> um, just because it's you know no and it's fun because another every once in a while someone's like I know Everett we played a show <laughs> with a on the head and heart tour with in in, in North Carolina where people were like <laughs> uh, I would say Everett's gotten um, so much, it's changed a lot. And when I was young, growing up here, you you didn't have venues. Like the fisherman thing is, is awesome. Uh, the initiative that they created that didn't exist. We went to house shows, we rented out Martha Lake Community Center, like the Grange or wherever, and you just play shows 
just however you could, but there wasn't really, um, actually I was telling the story when we were taking the pictures about playing at Jimmy Z's one time and it was <laughs> so funky and weird and, um, and we were like South Everett. So we kind of, we would, um, we would tend to like wander over to like the Redmond Firehouse or these places that were really kind of bringing bands in. But I mean, that's in our, in our blood for sure. I like to bring up like Carol Kay is from Everett, Washington, one of the greatest bass, play, bass players of all time. Yeah, nice. The wrecking Crew. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and it's, and I, I say Everett Pride because I feel like a lot of the time when I at least meet musicians that aren't from Seattle, but Tacoma, Everett, Federal Way, places like that, they'll, or Redmond, Paris Alexa being from Redmond, they'll say Seattle. They just kind of like, I'm from Seattle, <laughs> know that, but you guys are like, we're from Everett. <laughs> so I'm like, that's, that's pride. <laughs> I think it was, it was also, you know, there's, I think there was this like anti, like just being like, it, um, I remember when we first started, like one of the first papers that I ever wrote about us was uh, Seattle Weekly. And they were like, you're one of these like peripheral bands. You guys aren't like in. And we're like, yeah, we're just like these like kind of kids from Everett. And we, and that's where a lot of this stuff, we were cooking it. Like I uh, remember over by Boeing, we all lived, or Carl lived in this uh, place on airport road. and we would just like listen to records and kind of talk about, and we'd sing harmonies late into the night and we just kind of, you know, listen to the band, listen to all these groups and just sing and just kind of start clicking like, oh, we could do this. We could really make it happen. And then it felt like we stumbled into like the blue moon and then we started playing out and then people who weren't like my brother and his friends, you know, <laughs> started showing up and we're like, I don't know that guy, I don't know that guy. <laughs> And then suddenly it was like, it, so it still felt like, it never felt like we were, and I and all that stuff's kind of silly, like being like the, the in crowd or, you know, whatever, everyone's got their own like, you know, vantage point. But it felt like that we were, and people were kind of saying like, oh, these dudes from Everett or, um, listen, you know, listenable or something, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's check them out. You know? <laughs> so I felt like it was just kind of attached. And then uh, there was this, this is feeling of just being like, yeah, we're the Moon Dogs from Everett. And even though we like, um, I moved to Seattle, Carl and our old bass player stayed in Everett, John moved to Seattle, but in a way it always felt like that we were kind of tethered in, in a sense, like it kind of felt like where we were born, so. Yeah, when I introduced you all, I almost said Everett's own Moon Dogs, but I was like, I'm not sure if they're all from Everett or if they all want that, so. We've accepted I, I'm an honorary, honorary. Yeah. 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 I, I love Everett. <laughs> <laughs> Everett now is my Seattle citizen. You were just saying it. <laughs> it's an anarchist zone anyway. <laughs> That's how I feel about New Orleans. It's just kind of like, I kind of want to just claim New Orleans and uh, say I was accidentally born here, but. <laughs> Um, really? So now, <laughs> do you trade New Orleans for here? <laughs> uh, I, w I would. My family's from New Orleans, but like me and my I siblings were born here, and uh, uh, I got a chance to oh, okay. like, visit yeah. New Orleans, and I, was, I loved it, and it felt like home immediately. I feel like, like New Orleans is like the city that lives up to its hype. Oh my bus. god! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, like people be like oh, New York, and you're like, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's like you know, and there's probably a lot of more I got to see or like LA, but New Orleans, I'm like every time there, I'm just kind of like you know, stimulated by like food and music and like, just like the, the vibe yeah. there. So you're it's like, incredible. It's and cool. the first time I went there, I got engaged. <laughs> I'm married now, same person. <laughs> yeah. Then just went out there and get engaged. Um, okay. They'd say, hey, person proposed to me. Um, <laughs> It was like three in the morning on, on Bourbon Street. <laughs> yeah, we were just like, we're in New Orleans. He's, and I was like, and you just proposed to me. Oh my God, we're engaged. He's like, what do you want to do now? I was like, I don't know. Well, let's go to a strip club. I, never <laughs> I was like, I've never been to one. And we're in New Orleans. So like, wouldn't you watch your first strip club experience, kids, to be at the, on Bourbon Street? Um, oh, I got a video <laughs> of him on riding a bull and a bunch of... <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. That's what you do in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, no. So we like. We got those stories. I, I'm sorry. I, lo I, I love this story. So we get in there, and uh, I couldn't. First, I was indecisive about the strip club. And I was like, okay, that one. So we go to that one, and it's a Monday, and I didn't know that was like the bad night or whatever. As in, like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
non-experienced night or whatever. <laughs> and so we go in there and there's no one there. And there's a person in the elevator who's about to work. And I'm just excited. I'm like, look, I just got engaged. And she's just like, she's like that's nice. And that's my nice. fiance looks at me like, she's about to work to no one. She doesn't care. Uh, <laughs> You're engaged right now. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> thought we'd have a good laugh before we get to the dark part of the conversation. Uh -oh. So, um, 2020, guys, uh, has been filled with some uh, interesting things. Um, COVID, of course, which uh, as an love, you know, it, as, love it, love it, <laughs> as artists has um, affected, I'm sure you all, has affected myself. Um, there's been some loss in uh, 2020. Myself, I lost my stepdad a few months ago. Oh. And um, I know that you guys lost a c close friend. And I have to say, I'm sure it's an honor to be considered one of Lynn Shelton's like favorite bands. And it's amazing. Um, and just a lot of stress. And has any of this um, affected your creative, out your creative output um, thus far? It's a, a loaded year. Yeah. It's uh, it's like I kind of come I, and to go back to what I was saying earlier with uh, like I feel like because I, I lost some friends in 2019 and if it, it, it all kind of feels like a blur it feels like this kind of like flow into the next and mm -hmm. it's been kind of it can really deflate you it can really knock the wind out of you and um, uh, creatively like we haven't been really we've kind of been generally kind of keeping to our own little bubbles. We played a little bit. Um, I know that we all, we're all like songwriters. We all kind of write independently. I know like John's super prolific and is constantly like creating and posting awesome songs and Mikey's super prolific and Carl and I have gotten together and, and played. Um, I, I have a house that's like a music house. And so we've created our own projects and, and are creating, um, in a way, I think when COVID happened, Moondoggies were kind of focused in on the songs at hand, or like the, you know, like we had the, the, some stuff and we played it a few tonight, but that kind of continuous, like spinning, like twice a week practice repetition kind of halted. And so we've kind of, you know, it's that just out of caution or general kind of like feeling out the situation. I think all of us have probably, and I don't want to speak for anybody, um, at times felt both extremes, like where you're just like, with everything going on this year, zapped emotionally. And that there is that thing, I think it's fair to say that, you know, people are like, oh, all these artists are going to go and hunker down and be super yeah. creative. But, you know, I think artists sometimes also like dealing with like this stuff, I mean, with everyone actually, not just artists, but it's so overwhelming that sometimes it's just hard to go there. Yeah. You just almost like, sometimes I'm in, I've definitely been inspired this year and I've, you know, I feel like you and I have worked on some stuff or that we've all gotten together when we have and it's creative and, you know, just like we've, I remember one of the few times when we jammed, just like we had this night where we just, I just felt like we were all just like, <laughs> you know, and it felt so good, but everything's on hold. You don't know uh, when the next sh show, um, you anticipate that. That's kind of part of like how you survive. And it's just, it's a balance of not giving yourself too much of a hard time when you're not creative. And also just mm -hmm. being like, now's the time I need to like, I need to step into this. I need to focus in on this. So it's, it's such a weird extreme and it's kind of pulling you in both ways. So I, f I feel like everyone, you know, I'm not even, I feel like I'm not even speaking for the moon dog is I feel like it's like everyone generally is just like, um, on one end inspired by your peers and everyone who's creating and everyone who's like fighting and being, you know, pushing back. Uh, and on the other hand, it's, it's a little too heavy sometimes. Yeah. Like you're just like, all right, I just have to lay down and stare at the ceiling totally. for a second. <laughs> because as artists, I'm sure, and I, I've talked to, to other bands and artists about this. It's like there's, at, for some artists, they are feeling more creative. Like, wow, I have 
a lot of ideas and a lot of inspiration between, you know, COVID, uh, sucky ass police people who do crappy things and uh, the administration. And there's people who have a lot of influence there. And then there's just artists that are just drained and they're like, I, I don't put the pressure on me to expect an amazing 2021 record. Like I'm going through all of this also, you yeah. know? And um, I was talking with Naked Giants about this because Johnny had a really good point about the responsibility of artists. But I was also telling him like, I agree with that. At the same time, there, there's a responsibility from society to also take care of its artists, you know? Because mm -hmm. we do come to the rescue um, with our own art yet are kind of like when things like this happen are the last to kind of be taken care of and, and things like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, I drew a little balance thing up there to remind myself of like creativity <laughs> and not being creative <laughs> and how that's been affecting people. Um, have you all been doing like uh, any streaming? How's like the virtual thing? <laughs> how are you guys adapting to that? If you are, I saw that you did Dobe the residency, I did that too. I actually substituted that for my honeymoon because I fucking can't go anywhere. That's a good place. To go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. And so it's like, cool, I got paid on my honeymoon. Um, but uh, how are you guys liking or disliking or not really having an opinion on that, on this kind of virtual world of uh, performance art now? I feel like both of you have been really productive with that yeah well so i have like an alter ego called mikey the rad scientist that does like kids music music nice. for kids it's sort of science based music and so i started um along with kaylee cole we were we stream a show like every monday and tuesday and um it was kind of cool like at first when it was all starting to happen like uh the news came over to our backyard and filmed us and so then we got like a lot more followers and stuff from that um and then we've kind of been developing this really cute like community of kids that are you know requesting songs and kind of talking to each other through the facebook thing you know and so it's kind of been it's been interesting and pretty fun to work with um like it just it's not really a substitution for you know playing music and doing all the stuff that we normally do but it's been kind of fun and i've learned a lot about like technical stuff that I didn't think that I was going to have to know. Like I have a TV studio in my living room now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I've figured out a, how to piece together some of that stuff. So that's been really cool for me. And then Johnny's been doing all kinds of really wild, mad oh, scientist yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. like with Thanks. John's like visuals. creating, John created this thing. You, you had, you had a green screen behind you and you use your toes oh, yeah. and it scrolls <laughs> it like the song as you're doing it, but you're also doing a lot of like different video. Yeah. I kind of just gone down this rabbit hole of um, just playing with technology and music and kind of following my interests. It's hard to describe. <laughs> he can like draw like a, a line on a piece of paper with a pencil and then touch the pencil line and then make it like trigger sounds there, and there's stuff. Like, there's like, it's so crazy. Much, there's like, just so much weird stuff He's so modest about it too. You guys are like, no, he no, yeah, he's like, no, he's like, like, got these rigs and this camera. Rigs. Rigs. So, <laughs> I've kind of been like buying and selling gear on Craigslist for a long time. <laughs> it's like COVID happened. It's like, sweet. Well, I have this like crazy studio of stuff and now it's just i'm like fig like every time i make something it's really not about what i'm making but the process of different pieces of technology used in a way that they're not supposed to be used to kind of create a new it's kind of like retro but also futuristic in a way i don't know <laughs> it's pretty nice. cool anyway, yeah that's awesome <laughs> i have i felt like the first cup i felt initially like, oh, I'll do, you know, I'm going to play, I'll post a song. And like, hey, everybody's like, <laughs> hang in there. But like I was saying earlier, like I've, I've definitely, I, I, and I have a problem, and this is in, uh, with posting stuff. I just generally like, I know it's like stupid and, and like it's, it's a dumb thing because we're, everybody does it and you're wanting to promote yourself. But I do feel this weird kind of like, Every time I want to like go play a cover or do something, I just say initial, I just kind of like shoot it. I just try to ignore that feeling. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know what you're talking about. No, I know. It's not like it's like, oh, I don't want, but I'm saying like, it's this weird thing where I'm like, I just kind of want to focus in on like uh, working on the, the next record or like kind of going through it. But there's just like, you know, I have like kids and I am like, I need to like post the Venmo and just be like, 
But I, I, I think the hard thing with this, because people assume artists are all going to be the same. Everyone has their own process, and yeah. we're not all kind of like, uh, you know, like hey, and you know, like uh, it's hard for me to kind of click into that that mode sometimes. Sometimes I'm just uh, not. That's not how I like to generally create. Like I don't like. It's so it's trying to wrap my brain around that personally, like just trying to figure out like the the right thing to do. Initially, everyone was going full on, and then people were like, "Wait, hold on, maybe you should like you know say two weeks from now, and then like kind of build it up." And and so it's been and so and then I work with mode and I do the teaching stuff, and so that's kind of a whole learning experience where you're like, "There's that all weird delay," and you're like, "Yeah, hey buddy, hey buddy." <laughs> A minor, A minor, buddy. <laughs> I know, I've had like the worst luck with Zoom and like online lessons and it's just, yeah, I had to like sacrifice my drum lessons. I'm like, I can't do, oh, I can't online. do the drums drum online. Really. Oh, <laughs> I, that's, sorry. I heard that was the hardest. It's so hard. It's yeah. like, I'm sorry guys, it's going to work. And then with vocal students, I'm like, well, we can't, I can't accompany you or anything. We just kind of. Just sing at me, I guess. It's just <laughs> so Is there awesome. like a lot of like wash and stuff like through it? Like I can imagine like if you hit the symbol too hard, it would just like. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, you just worse. wouldn't hear yeah. anything for like <laughs> oh, yeah. five seconds. And they're something. going like. <laughs> you, you see their hands? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm just kind of like. Sounds great, buddy. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, I'm not going to make them do this. Yeah. I'm like, it. It looks right. Good uh, job. It sounds good. Uh, just like, yay! And I'm like, man, yeah. Well, okay. I did see, and it's, I mean, maybe this is, you know, people being, uh, in, it, it, like, the uh, inventive during the COVID times, but it, there was something I watched the other day where somebody had finally, they were given an example of a choir and that they were able to, like, they had kind of, like, finally figured out, like, because there was all that weird delay, they couldn't harmonize with each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they had this, somebody had, was, is, I don't know if it's on the market yet, but they were like plugged it in and they were all able to sync up. Oh, there's a thing, yeah, that allows the delays to match <laughs> up. Like, so that you It can, makes it happen on the one beat or something? No, it's just like, I can't remember how it works, but I think you're you're not actually singing at the same time, but you might be yeah, singing yeah, like 30 oh, seconds after the other person. Yeah. It sounds it's like, like an algorithm or something. It's, it's like, weird, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I haven't gotten to that. Yeah, we uh, yet, as <laughs> teachers need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> need that. So uh, how did it feel to play today's, you know, an empty theater? And I have to say this whole virtual thing, I feel like has humbled me because it's like, you know, you go, and I'm sure a lot of other artists, like you go from playing to either 300, 500,000 people. And then you look at those views, I'm like, oh, there's 53 people tuned in. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I'll take what I can get like, right thanks, now. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, cool. My mom's definitely watching. Yeah. And she told like eight people, so that's cool. Um, how does it feel to, um, to play today in like this empty theater? It felt good. If we've done two shows, we did Do Bay and then we did we've done this one. I mean, it, any any opportunity to play, it's just like there any any little bit of normalcy, even though it's kind of funky and weird to be uh, in. It's kind of you can find some humor in it because you have to, um, and find joy and and want you get to play in your room with your friends and um, we're all. You know, we're talking about like artists surviving and trying to keep our mental health. And um, this is like part of what we do. And this is like any opportunity, you know, you feel kind of it's I'm glad, you know, everyone's like super like careful because we're, you know, wanting to be careful. We needing to be careful. But it's like um, it's hard. It's so hard not yeah. to be playing music, honestly. Totally. For my, I mean, like, I mean, we've been a band for 13 12 years i've been playing music since i was 15. it seems very surreal like yeah. it's so um part of how it feels like part of the how we survive or it's like breathing air or something you know it's like it's so bizarre like so tonight felt really good i felt like we were definitely rusty <laughs> <laughs> um but you almost didn't care in a way just because yeah. you had the opportunity to like look at your friends in the eye and just be like, hey, what are you doing? Okay, like, sounds <laughs> yeah. good, you know. And I, I like that with Fisherman's that they're having us uh, 
look at each other yeah, it's, it's part like, of the experience i really yeah. like that well that's like almost like that that environment too it's like that's usually how we practice too mm-hmm. we're usually in a circle like that yeah too, so you can really engage yeah 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 that's that was that was nice that so was is there up. anything um next i mean and I've been saying this all day, it's a loaded question. <laughs> is there anything that um, you guys kind of have brewing? I know obviously the future is unpredictable right now. I mean, it is in general, um, but definitely right now, is there anything um, coming? Sure, I mean, we played a bunch of new songs tonight. Um, that is a funny quest. I mean, there's so much, <laughs> when I think about the future, I feel and not to be all like heavy, but I do, I feel like sometimes music at times has taken a backseat in my brain, but then I'll go there just to like go to the happy place and they're like, the you know, um, there is that, that, you know, to me, whenever people will ask like Moondog is you're working on something, it's like always, always, mm-hmm. always writing, always like creating, always with this in- intention, at least for me to like create um, and you know, we all have our like fun like things on the side. I've been playing a lot of drums with my roommate and like just jamming. But before COVID hit, that was uh, where my brain was focused for sure was working on these songs and creating. And so, yes, <laughs> but you know, uh, we shall see. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic actually, but. Um, I was really happy with the stuff that we were working on when we were in normal times, normal-ish times. Um, And I feel like we will get back there and get on track. And we're always being creative. And, you know, John and I have written some songs. We, you and I have gotten together more than the band just to like kind of hammer out ideas and jam a little bit. But um, always there's, until I, die i'm always gonna be working on the next thing so Word. that goes without saying so. yeah well, thanks guys for thank you yeah, talking thanks so much. And hanging out and thanks for like a really awesome performance it was very refreshing <laughs> to see you guys perform and see you guys in it and uh yeah thanks a lot guys thank, thank you so much, much. <laughs> It's fun to talk to somebody. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Right? Totally.